back for more? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Seventh Guest. So I wanted to show that off. This is what happens when you come back to the game after you've already started it and made some saves and whatnot. So he, the voice line changes. He'll never say, welcome to my house again. He'll just say that. So if we go ahead and load our game now. Now, in this particular case, we started back in the dining room. Sometimes, depending on where you're saving uh, in the house, it might throw you back to like a central location. Like sometimes it'll throw you back into the lobby. You don't necessarily start in the exact spot or maybe even exactly the same part of the room, but it's usually close enough. Um, so now let's go ahead and slowly turn and leave the dining room. So we're actually going to go ahead and go into that room that we opened up just now. It's to our side. But before we enter in there, I do want to show this off. If we turn to the right here, there is a clock we can check out. It's kind of dark over here, but if we click on it... We get this little animation with the with the, the moon just going like that. Again, no point to it, but it's just like a neat little thing. Okay, let's go ahead and head on into what is going to be the kitchen. Now, in this case, a cutscene didn't play. Sometimes some rooms will automatically have a cutscene just go because it's your first time entering. Um, sometimes even the angle you enter in, uh, I think, actually matters. But other times you'll actually get to trigger them on your own. So in this case, let's click on this one here first. When all the seven guests have gathered, you must figure out what I want. It's a puzzle, Mrs. Knox. And mind you, the others are also working at the same task. <laughs> it may all depend on who has the greatest need, or who is the bravest. There are clues throughout this house as to what must be done. The house is alive with clues. Hoping to meet you in the flesh. I will mean, name your host, Henry Stuff. So, that's what the guests here are doing. They're here to solve something, and they're gonna get, presumably, some kind of reward. Although they don't know exactly what. Um, at the same time, we're trying to figure out what they were trying to figure out. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look around here at the kitchen. Now there, it automatically moves. That's not me turning again. Most of the time, you only get, like, one or two different views in any given room. Um, so we can't get too much of a close look at this, because it won't stop moving, but... See that window there, some knives, cabinets, the fridge. We got another animation here we can look at. Yes, this is it. No, it isn't. So Julia was doing something at that cupboard over there, so we might want to check it out. I think that's all the animations here for right now. So we do have a puzzle here we can solve, but first, let's take a peek over to our side. Phone here, we cannot use it, unfortunately. We cannot call for help. Uh, and funny enough, we cannot even attempt to leave out this door, because I, mean, I can see the outside right here. Honestly, I'd probably just get the heck out of here at this point. Maybe grab this knife that's right next to me for some protection. Um, let's see. Doesn't seem like anything else we can interact with for now. If we were to look at our map, uh, this led to a stairwell, presumably down to like the basement. But it's not accessible at the moment. So let's go ahead and check out the puzzle we have here. Which, this is, I think, one of the more infamous ones. There's a couple that definitely stood out, I feel like, for a lot of players. Myself included. And you'll see why in just a sec. Here's food for thought. 
be warned, though. Your mind will be gorged before this night is done. <laughs> Calm down there, Stoff. Now, as you can see here, we have a bunch of cans, and that must be what Julia was moving around, and we can interact with them. If you pick one up, you can then swap it out with another can. Now, the animation itself does take a little, uh, it takes a little bit of time. Not the, not the longest, but that's a lot of, uh, animation time in total when you start moving around all these cans. You need to try to make a sentence, but obviously the catch is, if you look, there are no vowels except for Y's, so you can only make words that use Y, which does help in a way, because it really does kind of narrow down what you can and can't spell out. Now, I, of course, already know the solution in my head, so I'm going to put in. Otherwise, you really do, I feel like, just kind of have to look at all the letters you have available and just try, uh, try to start chopping out some different words and then get rid of those letters it's almost like you'd want to like write them down and cross out and mark and separate them to see what's left that you can use or if you can keep track of it all in your head um, in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, start moving around and as I'm forming it uh, if you don't know you might figure it out along the way so let me just go ahead and uh, start shuffling these around now this is a part where I could there's more to these cans than meets the eye I could use the speed up for this for each of these can movements, um, but to start with, uh, I won't. I'll give you like some time to actually look at it, what I'm trying to spell out, but I may start employing it in the second half here. So let's go ahead and move this. Now, if you know what you're doing, there's definitely an, uh, an optimal way to swap these that you can like minimize how much you're having to move. In this particular case, uh, I'm just kind of just winging it. I could kind of look and see like, okay, well, if I swap these two, um, you know, it's gonna it's gonna land exactly where I need to already for the other uh, word, but I'm just gonna just start moving around. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. So we got shy gypsy, then slyly, this word here is probably the one I couldn't get the most uh, as a kid. I probably got like half of the words and then I just, I, I can't remember how I ended up ultimately solving this. Maybe I just kept bashing my head against the, the wall until I finally got it, but, uh, or maybe I looked up the answer. I honestly can't recall at this point. Because this word here is one that I would not have thought of uh, as a kid. Spryly. So shy, gypsy, slyly, spryly. And then actually this word is probably the, the, the worst one for me. We got B for... I don't think you can do this. Oh, I see what you did there, Stoff. He likes to interject a lot, making stupid puns. Spryly blank by my... Well, we've got... Flip this around. By my crypt. This was a word I did not know as a kid. I know it now, obviously, but uh, I did this the most suboptimal way, but that's fine. Trist. Shy gypsy, slyly, spryly, trist by my crypt. Essentially means come, come to my crypt, meet me in the crypt. Yes. And I think the meaning for that is actually speaking to her, telling her to, like, come by my crypt, I think. At least that's what my brain always thought. I don't know if that's actually what it was meant for. Um, but in this case, by solving that, we actually completed this room. And if we were to look at the map, we'd see it. I'm not going to always look at the map, but just know that we did unlock this door now. Having said that, we're not ready to go here yet, so we'll go ahead and leave this for now. We'll come back later. But having solved the cans puzzle is kind of nice because I hated doing that one as a kid. Um, just because figuring out was tough. And then it was just annoying having to move the cans one at a time. Doing it now as an adult, it really isn't that bad. I didn't even use the speed up animation, uh, which I normally would have done. Um, 
But also by doing that, we unlocked an extra animation here hovering over this pot. So if we click it, Interestingly, while Julia's freaking out over there, two things happened there. We heard him say, bring him to me. Him who? We don't know. And also, our character was able to comment saying, I could smell it and it made me feel sick. Not sure what that means at this point, but maybe we'll figure it out later. I think that's all we can do in the kitchen for now. So let's go ahead and get out of here. What I might do is, the first time going through these rooms like this, I think I'll at the very least let the animations all play out at their normal speed. Maybe like the second half when I'm navigating back through old rooms, maybe I'll speed them up. Um, I could also edit out travel time. Uh, I may or may not do that, it depends, I don't know. It'll, it'll just, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. Now if we come back over here to the front door, this was not available earlier. I think after maybe like the first puzzle you solve, this uh, becomes uh, uh, selectable. So if we click this now. My dear Mr. Dutton, welcome to my house. The arrangement is simple. You are to spend the night as my guest. And in exchange, I will give you your heart's most secret desire. And you know what that is, Mr. Dutton, don't you? I require one thing of you, a special service, a task that I set up for you. There's a guest who hasn't arrived yet. A guest unlike the six of you, a very special guest. Your services involve that guest. You must wonder what that service is, but that is the game, Mr. Dutton. The puzzle I've set for you. This is all I can tell you, Mr. Dutton. In the morning, only one of my guests will walk out of this house with his or her every wish granted. So that gives us a little more about what's actually happening here. Now, it was he was uh, talking to Mr. Dutton with that, but that's essentially for all the guests. They are here in this house, the six of them, to figure out what to do, and if they solve everything, Stoff will grant whatever they want, and then they'll be the only ones to walk out with it. Possibly the only ones to walk out alive as well, we'll see. Now, it's called the seventh guest, this game, right? And he only has to talk about the six. Stoff mentions there's a seventh guest that we haven't seen yet, but we don't know who that is or where they are. So for now, let's just go ahead and solve this puzzle that has now opened up to us. It's easy to find a place to start. It's hard to find a place to finish. This one is a little weird at first, because if you click on any of these spots, what the first thing you usually want to do is see what's selectable, which they usually use the, uh, the eyeball symbol for. So if I click here. Which way should I go now? Sometimes you'll get a choice. And if you look, you can see, well, I can't select those anymore, but oh, and it's the different colored eye. I can select here and here. Looking at the way this is drawn, if I click this... I wonder if you will get the point of this. Drops a little hint there, we're trying to fill out the points. The spider will walk that way. But, if I were to click this one again now... The points of this star are missing something. Yeah, they need a spider, but the spiders can only travel along these lines. Now you'll notice that I immediately borked this puzzle because now there's no way for me to generate a spider to walk to this one. I needed one of these two. So again, this puzzle doesn't automatically tell me that I failed for some reason. I'm not gonna go, I'm not going to waste time here. I'm going to have to start again. And I'll just restart it. I know there's at least one puzzle I can show you where the game automatically yells at you about it, but in this case, which way should I go now? We'll go ahead and do the same motion. 
I wonder if you will get the point of this. The trick to this is, wherever you start, because it doesn't matter, make a spider go that way. The spot you just used, find the path that's connected to that from the other side. Which way should I go now? And fill backwards. Kind of just like keep filling in what you were using. So the since points of this star are missing something. So again, I just used this one, so now this one. Which way should I go now? Just kind of keep working backwards. In my mind, it's like working backwards. You can maybe say working forwards, but... Uh, if I were to now do this. Which way should I go now? Do that all the way around, and it will... There's something missing. This star seems to have lost its sparkle. I don't... Which way should I go now? I don't know how adding spiders to it gives it a sparkle, but all right, sure. I personally just find it creepy. Which way should I go now? Also, these are some huge spiders, all right? These are the terrifying ones. And with the last one done... Curses! More screaming and there's a kid here. Hmm. He might be the seventh guest because he's the only he's the only one that we haven't seen yet, but he seemed very adamant about actually getting out of here. Um, so maybe we'll encounter him again later. For now, this one's complete. If we were to look at the map, we'd see that this room is filled in. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and head over this way. room right in front here is actually closed off to us at the moment. We cannot come in here for quite a bit, actually, but we have to navigate over this way. Just kind of taking a look around. I'll generally try to kind of look around at each point, just to kind of show off the different parts of the room. Even though right here, it's pretty darn dark, so it's kind of hard to see anything, really, but for at least for the, the details on, like, the paintings. So now we're going to enter the library, or maybe the study. Not oh, the library. Now, one interesting thing here is we've so far learned that this symbol is for puzzles, right? Um, in this case, this is not a puzzle we have to solve. This book here is actually to help the player, which for me was a godsend um, because there were a couple of puzzles that were just really annoying to deal with. The purpose of this is whatever puzzle you just last visited and like interacted with, that's what this is going to then reference because it'll keep changing depending on which puzzle you last looked at. If I were to click this here, we're going to see a message. Now in this case, we just solved the spider puzzle. So by looking at it here, it tells us the puzzle is solved. In this case, it's talking about the spider puzzle. If we hadn't solved it yet, let's just say we looked at it and we gave up. If we came to this book the first time, it's going to give you a hint on how to solve that puzzle. If you try to go back to the puzzle, still can't figure it out, come back again the second time, it'll give you a second hint. Go back to the puzzle, you have to actually go back to the puzzle and interact with it to like register. Come back a third time, the game will solve it for you. You don't see what the solution itself is, but it'll just say the puzzle is solved. And when you click here, even whether it's just uh, seeing the hint or having the puzzle solved, clicking this will actually bring up a little shortcut that's going to teleport me over to where the puzzle was. So in this case, it's going to kick me back over to the lobby um, because we just did the spider puzzle. So see, we're back, uh, we're back here. We're not facing it, but we're in the room. So let's go back into the library now. So if you get stuck on a puzzle, you can use that book to get hints, two hints, or just have the game outright solve it for you. Uh, maybe you just can't figure it out, or you know what you need to do, but it's just too darn tedious, um, especially if you're not doing any of the speed-ups. So we will not be using the book in this playthrough, but I did want to at least show off that it existed. I'm not going to show off every hint, because that would be ex especially tedious, but just know that it is there, um, and... Uh, well, we'd actually see text for the for the hints if we were actually getting one, but in this case, we're only going to see puzzle solved because it's done. Now we're just about at time, but uh, I think I'll go ahead and set us up for the next puzzle before we go. If we come over here, 
I never understood exactly what the point of this was, because it uses the finger symbol like you can like go this way, but if I click it, it's going to do this animation that's kind of long and drawn out. It looks like a door is kind of like fading in, like, like oh, there's maybe a door there that we can unlock and open. And you might think maybe the animation is getting stuck, or it's just, it's really wonky. I don't know if this ever does anything else. And in all the times I've played this, it never does anything but that. This never opens up as far as I know. If it does, uh, I'd be interested to, to actually see that. Because otherwise, it's just an animation that plays, but it uses this like you're supposed to walk there. I think that's why it confused me the most, was because I'm used to seeing the, the mask or the chattering teeth for animations, not the finger symbol. So, as far as I know, that doesn't do anything. But who knows? I could be wrong. Now, we do have the finger uh, calling us over towards this way, towards the fireplace. I'm not going to click that for now. Um, we'll make use of that later. Just to kind of finish exploring the room, taking a look at it from the different angles. We'll go ahead and turn this way. Some funky little animation. Again, don't know why it's. I mean, honestly, half the animations in this game aren't. They, they're not there to serve any actual purpose. It's just kind of fun, part of the, you know, the charm and the fun of this. Now we do have a puzzle here with this telescope, but we're gonna go ahead and solve that in the next video. So we'll go ahead and make a save for now. We'll call this end of part two. And in the next video, we'll go ahead and check out this telescope, uh, telescope, telescope puzzle, and uh, see what it's all about. So I'll see you then.